Hi guys, my name is Kat Johnston. I'm so excited to be here today on Keith Andrew Network's uh, talk show. And I hope you guys enjoy our conversation. Um, we don't always see eye to eye, but that's why it's important to have these conversations about um, you know, what's happening in our country. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Key Fans Network at a 677. I'm here with Kathleen Johnson. I just want to say it's great to follow up with you after about four, almost five years. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Good to see it was you. Wonderful to have you on the show again, and let's catch up. Let's do. What's going on? Well, not much. Yeah, how's quarantine been for you? Pretty productive, actually. I've just been, I am temporarily unemployed, uh, but I've been trying to just uh, pour all my energy into creative stuff. So I've been making a lot of videos for the, uh, my theater company's doing a, a digital cabaret at City Garage Theater. You can find us on YouTube. Um, and, you know, cleaning out my closets, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you said mention uh, the cabaret and having everything online. Um, the New York City, why can I think, I don't know, I have a brain fart. It's the um, Broadway in New York City. It's like, oh, well, you know, for actors, you know, it's, you can't go out and act, but they're doing the online thing. So it was, I guess in a way, social media is really booming, especially yeah. with can't go out. Why not? I'll give you an example I'm talking about. Look at Zoom. Zoom's numbers one for the roof. Skype, people are downloading Skype left and right. Uh, Facebook actually now created a portal. And some people actually are benefiting from the lockdown. And some people are hurting from the lockdown as well. Yeah, that's for sure. I, uh, I You know, I've been pretty lucky, I have to say. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, the goal is that I'm just furloughed from my job. It's just a small company. Um, and we rely on colleges to, um, as our clients. And when, with colleges closed, there's no income. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, hopefully they'll have me back soon, <laughs> but for now, um, the, the way the unemployment is set up is, is livable. So, so it's allowed me a little space to be creative and, um, and I'm thankful for it. It's, it's, uh, a nice opportunity to, use that time productively. No, absolutely. And what's just still like a follow-up, you know, question. I, last time I saw you, you had like, uh, I think you had blue hair. <laughs> Probably. It changes a lot. Um, so this is actually my quarantine hair. Uh, I, I bleached it myself. Um, and I feel like I did a pretty good job. I'm, I'm happy with yeah, how it turned nice. out. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, this is my quarantine haircut. Where uh, you know, I have to put my hand above my head and you can actually see it. Yes, I do have a green screen. <laughs> Good. Uh, this is actually my quarantine look where I went too short, so now I look like Lex Lufar. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> you could say Dr. X too, right? Yeah, I could. <laughs> He's less evil. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, Lex Lufar has his moments. He, you know, he's more like. He's a villain, but he has that vendetta. He, he has a a message. When he does something, there's a reason for it. So, yes, he's working with the bad guy, but when he works with the heroes, he has a reason for it. He tries to benefit himself from it. Yeah. I, I can't say I'm the most uh, versed in comic books, but I, a lot of my friends are. So I, I get some of that information, like, uh, secondhand, you know? <laughs> well, are you a Green Lantern fan or not really? I am familiar with the fact that the Green Lantern exists. Um, and that's about it. I know, the, I know the symbol. It's the boop, boop, boop on a green and white circle. That's about as, as deep as my knowledge goes. <laughs> are you, last we got across and now we can go to another subject. Or do you like Gabriel Iglesias? Uh, he's a stand-up, right? Fuzzy. Yes. I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. Fluffy, fluffy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I have seen his stuff, and yeah, he's super funny. 
he, he got into an argument with his uh, son's friend. It's like, who's your favorite green and who's your favorite heroes? Batman. Batman. Batman's the creepiest. He comes out of the shadows. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> Are you, you know, creepy. Like, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, is that? He, he is kind of creepy, actually, when you think about it. Like, he's this rich guy who has, a, like, basically a dungeon, right? Where he keeps all these, like, fancy toys. But he uses his powers for good. But, yeah, the boy is kind of creepy. It's true. I know. He has, uh, what was the other joke he made? Uh, Joker, Whitler, Two-Face. Those are all Mexican uh, members of a cartel. Oh, say that one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, Batman's villains, you know, Two-Face, Whitler. Two Face Whitler, Joker. They're all members of the car- Mexican cartel. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that before. I like it. <laughs> I mean, the other one was the Green Lantern. It's like, tell me one person who feels empowered when they have a ring on. So, what what are the Green Lantern's powers? Like, what does he do? Well, there's a bunch of them actually. Um, the green, the green one. Well, it's funny. I'm actually wearing green right now. Oh, oh nice. Blue yeah. green. Um, yeah. Green means willpower. Okay. Let's see if I can remember this without bustering it. Green means willpower. Blue means hope. Red means rage. Yellow means fear. Orange means greed. Um, pink means love. White means, well, white's not actually a color. Uh, white means life. Black means death. Uh, purple. I believe that means passion. I'm not really sure. I just know it's the, the whole primary colors. Like yeah. said, white, white and black are colors. They're not they're shades. The absence like of that. or all of them, yeah. So it's like red, blue, orange, green. So I like the primary colors. But each of them had their own meanings to them. Yeah, uh, I'm wearing yellow, but I promise I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, you know, you mentioned, you know, everything's going to be, like we talked, everything's online. Have you feel like you kind of benefited with everything you've been working on? You know, have your numbers gotten up with social media? Or, you know, how's your social media been going? Um, that's a good question. Well, you know, honestly – most of the creative stuff I've been doing has been for the theater company that I'm in just to try to keep them afloat. You know, it's hard um, to stay alive when you you can't have people in the seats. So I hope it's been helping. Um, They've been releasing content constantly. Uh, My own social media, I've been a little more lax on. I feel like I've gotten like, you know, a handful of followers here and there. Um, but I, I've been pouring more of my energy into their uh, their content. So it's a good question. I should go look at their numbers. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> or me, um, it's kind of like I have more time to focus on my talk show. But, yeah. you know, I, I am networking, so slowly. You know, some people say my talk show is like a bowel movement. You know, it, it's moving. So eventually it's going to come out. If you want to look at it like that. But the, the numbers are going up, yes. Good. But I don't really see any difference. It's not like, oh, my God, you know, quarantine was the best thing that happened to me because I now have a couple million people. It's kind of like, oh, it's it's moving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one step at a time, right? And, and then maybe with everybody at home, it gets spread out more because everybody's watching different things or who knows. You know, it's funny. I came across this thing on Instagram where they're like, oh, you can do a startup app application for TV. And, uh, you know, I did like a Zoom thing. It was from, I recall, yeah, give us $200 and we can walk you through the process and we can get you on Apple TV. We can get you on Firefox. No, Firefox is computer. Apple TV, Fire Stick, uh, Google, Chrome, or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's good. And I almost fell for it. And by then I was thinking, huh, well, well, I'm on YouTube. My, no one's watching on YouTube. So why should I waste $200 for a TV thing if that's 
that they're not going to watch it on the computer. Why the hell would they watch it on the TV? Yeah, and also, you know, it's one of those things where major networks like that, they don't usually ask you to pay them. That's not, that's not the usual sequence of events. It usually kind of goes the other way around where they say, hey, we like your content. Let's figure out a way to work together, you know? Yeah, it's funny. My brother says that to me, too, when I try to talk to him about, you know, what I should do. And he's like, oh, yeah. this person said, they said, if I pay them, they would represent me. It's like, yeah, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, not, not usually. Oh, ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was said, not usually, no. <laughs> because uh, there's some people like, oh, you know, that's so great. I would love to work with you. Okay, yeah, I can go. Oh, I can get you on Fox News, or I can get you on here. I can get you there. Okay, when can you start? Well, well mm -hmm. how fast can you give me that $500? I went, yep, no. Yeah, yeah. And usually there, it's a longer process, too. I've, I've worked a little bit in the entertainment industry, and and there are contracts involved yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It, it's, uh, I'm glad that your brother was able to help you through that because um, that would be sad, you know. If, if you invested that money and then it didn't, somebody was, you know, trying to pull a fast one on you, you know. Uh, I know I came across this one guy, I won't mention any names, but he's so like, you know, give me 200. I said, how about this? I will give you $50, and if you can get me on a radio station, then we can take it to the next step. Or I will give you, I, I'm willing to swallow $100. If you can get me on a TV station, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, Fox, CNN, public broadcasting, something, then I know you're legit. Oh, well, you know, I, I have yep. so many people I have to represent. It's like, nope, <laughs> I'm giving you the chance. You want yep. the $100, you have to show me that you can do something for me. I'm not, I don't have sucker on my forehead. I'm not going to say, here's $100. You'd be like, $100. It's like uh, Woody Tunes, like, well, what do you want to do today, George? Well, I don't know. Give me more <laughs> money. Okay, George, here you go. Here's my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, if anyone's saying that they'll represent you as long as you pay them, then yeah. they ain't for real. <laughs> what about you, man? I'm passing the show over to you. Like, do you have someone representing you? or? I don't, actually. Um, you know, LA is a tough city. It's tough to, this business is really, um, it, it's it's very competitive. Uh, so I'm I'm in a theater company and I do a lot of my own stuff. I have um I have a web series on YouTube as well. It's called Everybody Hates Hipsters. Um, pretty fun. So so uh, that's something that we've been trying to get around to um, festivals and stuff. So we're working on that, my partners and I, and uh, I have another project that I worked on a long time ago that I'm developing into, I'm hoping to film it and maybe kind of make it a, a, a hybrid uh, of a, like an Instagram show, but then keep some footage off of, off of social media so that I can cut it together into a feature and still submit it to festivals without it already having um, premiered. So something that I'm playing with, I'm, I'm using this chance for the, the city garage cabaret to sort of help practice, help myself practice the filmmaking aspect of it so that I can feel more comfortable with that when I get to my other project. Well, if you're interested, maybe you want to interview me or something for like a sort of project. And now you said you're not really, into interviewing but hey don't knock it till you try it's always good to <laughs> cover your bases yeah yeah that's true i'll keep it in mind but i think um i think i'm a, maybe a pass for this saturday uh as far as i'll co-host though i'm honored to be asked i thank you though <laughs> for right now i think i have about 45 people who who say wink wink who say we're coming but Hey, it's better than last year. Last year, I only had about six people, but now it's online, and who yeah. knows? Hopefully, we get a uh, vaccine, but it's kind of funny. Actually, I'm going to do talk to you about that. Um, you know, it's funny because 
first you're talking about the whole vaccine thing and it been, you know, unfortunately this murder happened, but it's kind of funny in a way because people actually forgot that we're still quarantined because they say people are easily, I guess, amused. You know, if you shine, hold up shiny keys, I, I probably you get my uh, amusement for like two minutes and forget what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> but, you know, there's always, here's another thing, you know, yesterday, I don't know if you know, uh, well, guess how fast they, they bury it. Uh, they mentioned an asteroid was going to zoom by Earth. Did you know oh. about that? No, I didn't. Exactly. That's about as soon as they tell you a story and then they say, yeah, maybe we shouldn't tell the media about this or the public, they take it down. But yeah, there was supposedly a meteor that was supposed to hit her, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's always going to be something, you know. If it doesn't matter if it's the quarantine, it doesn't matter if, the, you know, it's a riot. Unfortunately, there's always going to be something. I mean, I agree with you. Like, we do have a short attention span in general. But I personally, um, I, I, I very much strongly stand with Black Lives Matter. Yep. And, and I think while there has been some violence associated with the protest that may actually not be tied to the protest, there have also been pe- peaceful protests in all 50 states, as well as all across the world, actually. I mean, we've had several protests every day in LA since um, the whole thing happened. And only the first couple of days was there was there violent unrest. The rest of them have been peaceful and and making a change that really has to happen in the United States. I mean, the system is not set up in a just way, and it just isn't from my perspective. And it has to change. I, you know, none of us are free unless all of us are free. And right now, all of us aren't. Not really. So. I, uh, though, though it does bring some danger, uh, protesting during quarantine, it also shows how, how incredibly important this issue is to so many people. Um, I personally haven't been protesting myself because my boyfriend works in a nursing home. So I'm so close by degrees to immunocompromised people, like mm-hmm. a whole institution full of them that I just, I don't feel comfortable putting a hundred lives at risk, but I've been doing some art protests um, and I'm trying to educate myself and sign petitions and, and use my money to, to um, show my support by supporting the funds that are backing the movement, you know? No, I agree with you 100%. And, you know, I mentioned this, let's see, um, yesterday I did an interview. I said to the guests, you know, I, I am for, you know, Black Lives Matter. And as I said, and I stand by this, I don't care what anyone says, hashtag all lives matter. Yeah, and, and you know, um, just just to follow up with what you just said really quickly, uh, I, I understand that politics can be polarizing, and I understand not wanting to be involved in it. I, I personally am very political. Uh, I'm a bit of a political junkie. Um, I personally um, want to exercise my right to shape my home. You know what I mean? That's, that's my perspective on it. I like being involved, and, um, and I want this nation to be fair. I want it to live up to its ideals. That's my goal in, in being politically active. Um, so I appreciate you fielding those questions. I know that wasn't the direction maybe we were hoping to go, but it's just so ubiquitous, isn't it? It's everywhere. We, we can't help but look at it and talk about it. And I think we have to do that um, as a people. I think it's important. Uh, so that being said, um, my Instagram and Twitter handles are both birdiecat82, so that's B-I-R-D-I-E, like whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, cat is like my name, K-A-T-82, because I'm not ashamed. I'm 37. That's the year I was born. Um, Please follow me uh, if you're inclined to public. 
Uh, and I was excited that you asked me uh, to be interviewed again. I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, awesome. I enjoyed it last time. I'm happy to support your cause. I think it's really amazing what you're doing, um, creating this TV network and, uh, you know, interviewing so many people. I, I totally support you. So I was happy to be a part of it. No, absolutely not. I'm looking for a part three down the road. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spink. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi, I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network.